a depressed, divorced single mother gets into a whirlwind romance with a man who just escaped prison. Henry Wheeler prepares his mother's coffee before she wakes up. Later, he realizes he has already outgrown his clothes. So Adele wills herself to take him out to shop despite her fear of leaving the house. Usually, they only go out once a month for groceries. Adele seems disoriented when they get in the car, and she doesn't notice Henry assisting her when it suddenly shifts to neutral while trying to maneuver in reverse. Henry's father, Gerald, has remarried, and he wanted Henry to live with his new family, but the boy refused. Since his parents' separation, Henry tried to fill in the roles of a son and a husband to his mother. He prepared breakfast in bed for her and even a husband for a day coupon book. He helped with chores and took her on a date. However, Henry soon realizes he wasn't equipped to be a husband for a day. They stop at the bank, but Henry goes inside alone. The teller tells the boy that she hopes to see his mother in the bank one day. Later, Adele takes the time to muster her courage before going inside the store. While Henry is checking the comic section, a man suddenly approaches him. Frank Chambers is bleeding and forces the boy to help him. Adele is surprised when Henry comes up to her with a stranger. Frank implies that he will hurt her son if she doesn't help him. When they get inside the car, Frank instructs her to take him to their house. With Henry's life on the line, Adele has no choice but to follow. When they arrive, Frank reveals that he hurt his leg jumping out of the window of a hospital where he was treated for appendicitis. Thanks to this, he escaped prison this morning. He would have gone further if his leg wasn't injured. He asks Adele to let him stay until nightfall. The woman fears that he might hurt them, especially Henry. So the man reassures her that he has never intentionally hurt anyone in his life. Given his situation, it's difficult for Adele to believe that. They later see the news, which reports that Frank is serving 18 years in prison for murder. He's quick to defend himself, saying it didn't happen that way. Henry is worried since hiding a fugitive is against the law. Frank proposes tying up Adele so it'll look like a kidnapping in case someone comes by. After gently tying Adele to a chair, Frank cooks for them and feeds her. As this happens, Adele recalls telling her son about making love. She told him that there was another kind of hunger everybody forgets to teach him, the desire and longing for human touch. At present, it's already dark, but the police are patrolling the area. Frank asks when the train starts in the morning, but Adele doesn't know. He then starts untying her so she can go to bed. Henry can't sleep that evening, so he checks downstairs, where Frank is on the couch. As he tries to sleep, Frank recalls being with a young woman he left after joining the army. The following morning, Frank catches Henry glancing at the newspaper with his escape on the front page. He doesn't blame him for wondering what happened, so Frank clarifies that when he was in the hospital, he told the guard that he'd jump out the window if he left. The guard still left to smoke, so Frank did what he said he would. The man then asked, asks about their family. So Henry says he sees his father, stepbrother, and half-sister on Sundays. Adele arrives, holding the rope they used to bind her. The fugitive then says they won't need it anymore and tells her that if the day comes, she can say that he tied her up. Then it won't be a lie. No train goes by that day. So Frank stays and helps around the house. Henry assists him as he changes the oil in Adele's car and the filter in the furnace. He checks out the cord of firewood that just got delivered and informs Adele that the delivery man is shorting her. He even mops the floor then teaches Henry how to play baseball. While Adele sews Frank's pants, they all get startled by the knock on the door. Frank immediately grabs the woman as hostage while he orders Henry to answer the door. It turns out it's just their old neighbor, Mr. Jervis, offering them a bucket of peaches. Mr. Jervis looks for Adele, prompting Henry to lie that his mother is in the shower. The good neighbor warns him about the fugitive on the loose, so Henry shouldn't be opening the door without an adult. When Mr. Jervis is gone, Adele Adele instructs her son to check on his pet so she can talk to Frank privately. Adele scolds the man for using her son as a lookout. She knows how Henry looks at him and the encouragement Frank gives him. Although Adele wants it for Henry, she won't have it at the expense of making her son an accomplice. After this exchange, Frank's attention goes to the overripe peaches. He finds a way to use them. So he teaches Adele and Henry how to bake a peach pie. Frank and Adele's hands touch as they mix a bowl of mashed peaches for the filling. While Henry listens to Frank's instructions, he can't help but notice how the guy stands behind his mom to guide her in kneading the dough. That night, they share the peach pie they made together. As they do, Frank slowly puts his hand on Adele's waist, not knowing that Henry can see their reflection through his toy. He also sees his mother leaning on the stranger but pretends that he doesn't. After the police patrol passes by the house, Frank decides to leave. However, Adele and Henry convince him to stay until his stitches heal. So Frank spends another night with them. This time he sleeps with Adele. Henry can hear them from his room and calls the sound they make as rhythm.
them. The following day, Frank does more work around the house. He even teaches Henry how to change a tire and helps Adele iron their clothes after doing laundry. In return, Adele teaches him how to Roomba. For lunch, Frank thinks of having a barbecue, so he sends Henry to pick up groceries. While shopping, the boy encounters an intelligent, rebellious young girl named Eleanor, who tells him that drinking from aluminum cans gives one Alzheimer's. She then asks him what she can do in the town, and Henry suggests bowling. At the counter, the cashier comments that Henry's not buying the canned goods he usually does. He also notices that Henry got a man's razor and suggests getting the pink one for Adele. Henry is quick to lie that it's for him. The cashier is initially suspicious but then figures that the boy is practicing shaving. On the way home, Henry sees a policeman putting up a wanted poster for Frank, which makes him nervous. At home, he finds his mom and Henry together on the balcony when a woman suddenly walks in, looking for Adele. Henry panics, trying to prevent the woman from going inside. He runs to the kitchen, where Frank holds him to calm him down while Adele meets her friend Evelyn. Evelyn asks her to watch her son Barry, who has cerebral palsy. Adele feels bad about turning her friend down, but Evelyn insists since her father is in the hospital. With no choice, Adele agrees. Frank introduces himself to Barry when Evelyn leaves, much to Adele's surprise. He even lets him join their baseball game while Adele watches. After Henry successfully strikes the ball, Frank then teaches Adele how to swing the bat. Her son is glad to see her happy, and when Adele manages to hit the ball, they all cheer. As they spend a quiet afternoon together, Frank recalls when he got his girlfriend Mandy pregnant and married her. Things seemed great for their family for a while, until one night when he and Mandy fought, which ended with her lying unconscious on the floor. At present, Adele fondly watches Frank while he wipes Barry's sweat. The four are gathered to watch TV just in time for the news to show Frank again. Adele worries that Barry might recognize his face when Evelyn's car arrives. Frank hides as Adele and Henry open the door for Evelyn. While the mothers catch up, Barry finally recognizes Frank on TV, and he's trying to tell his mom about him. However, because of his speaking disability, Evelyn thinks he's only acting up, so she slaps her son to shut him up. Adele and Henry feel bad for the poor boy as they see their visitors out. While brushing his teeth, Henry hears Adele and Frank's conversation. He peeks inside his mother's bedroom to catch her tending to the man's wound. Adele asks Frank why he didn't ask for an appeal when he was young. Frank answers that it was because he felt that he got what he deserved. Adele says she can't imagine him not being free. Frank responds that he can't call himself free until he can walk down the street with his arms around her. He suggests taking Adele on a road trip to places where no one knows them. But she comments that it sounds like they're on the run. Adele knows her ex-husband would never let her take Henry away, as she considers joining the fugitive. This makes her son worry. The next day, Adele asks Henry to pick up some books in the library. There, Henry sees Eleanor and musters up the courage to approach her. As they talk, Eleanor reveals that she is from Chicago and is supposed to try out living with her dad this year. However, she believes her mom just wanted to fool around with her boyfriend, so she got rid of her. Henry can relate, so he ends up talking about Frank. Suddenly, Eleanor insinuates that this man will soon want Henry out too. She shares that she's researching her legal rights since her parents pulled her out of the school she likes just to put her in the middle of their fight. Henry then shares the book he got for his mother about Canada because Adele wants to know if it's a good place to move to. When Eleanor asks Henry if they're even taking him, the kid answers that his mother won't leave him behind. Eleanor suggests that his only hope is to find a way to get rid of his mom's boyfriend before he gets rid of him. Years ago, while Frank was with Mandy and their baby, they passed by another couple. Oddly, Mandy and the other man averted each other's eyes, but Frank didn't say anything about it. Still, his suspicion grew, so he asked the town's bowling alley about the women's league, which his wife attended. However, he discovered that the schedule that Mandy told him wasn't right, so she'd been going somewhere else. At present, Gerald picks up Henry for their weekly dinner. While having dinner with his father and siblings, the topic of girls suddenly opens. Gerald tells Henry that he should cover the basics about girls, adding that it will be difficult without a man around in the house. Henry quips there's already someone to cover for him, surprising his father. When Henry returns home, he catches his mother dancing with Frank. He feels jealous that he comments about the music being too loud. At this point, Adele talks to him alone, informing him that they've decided to move to Canada. Frank also shows up with a noticeably shaved face. Henry is about to cry as he assumes his mother is leaving him behind. When Adele realizes how he feels, she immediately hugs him and clarifies that they're all going. Frank states that Canada is a perfect place for them because it doesn't need a passport to cross borders. As for the roadblocks, Frank says they're expecting a man traveling alone, not a family. The three immediately pack up the next day. Frank 
Mike discovers a photo album with Henry's baby photos and another that shows a pregnant Adele when Henry was a toddler. Henry suddenly goes out to see Eleanor one last time. He reveals that his mother is taking him to Canada tomorrow. When Eleanor realizes he's moving on the first day of school, the smart girl figures out that the guy they're with is the wanted man on the news. At the house, Frank's wound suddenly hurts, worried. Adele says she will tell Henry to go to the pharmacy before the wound gets infected. Since Henry isn't around, Frank urges Adele to go instead. Meanwhile, Henry ends up telling Eleanor about their escape plan. The girl still insinuates that maybe Frank is just waiting for him to leave so the man can run off with his mom. As for Adele, her panic attack kicks in as she starts the car, and Frank thinks it's because she's having second thoughts about their escape. To explain herself, Adele recalls her miscarriages after Henry was born. By the fourth time, Adele reached full term, only for the baby to be stillborn. The doctors took pity on her, so they still let her hold her baby. However, holding her still child convinced Adele that she was done trying. From then on, it became hard for Adele to go out and see pregnant women. After hearing this, Frank reassures her that he came to save her. He recalls when he was in a pub carrying his baby, only to find Mandy with another man. This led to their argument, making Frank question if the child was his. Mandy called him a fool, and in anger, Frank pushed her too hard. She hit her head on the radiator, which ultimately killed her. While Frank was trying to wake her up, he noticed water dripping. He frantically ran upstairs to find the tub overflowing with his baby in it. At present, on the day they're leaving, Henry writes a letter to his dad. He then goes to Gerald's house and leaves the letter in the mailbox. As he walks home, a police officer insists on giving him a ride. The policeman sees Adele's car full of luggage and becomes suspicious. He questions her if they're going on a road trip. Adele tries to keep calm and responds that they're things she'll sell on consignment. He offers help, and Adele can't afford to refuse, so she lets him in. Despite noticing how empty the house is, the officer proceeds to take out a heavy box. When the cop is finally gone, Frank tells Adele they should leave immediately. He instructs her to go with Henry to the bank and withdraw all the money from her account. While Frank is alone in the house, Evelyn suddenly walks in and sees him. As the woman waits for Adele, she becomes increasingly suspicious of who Frank really is. The situation in the bank isn't looking good either, because the manager becomes suspicious about the sudden withdrawal. Henry chimes in to admit that they're making a run for the border like Bonnie and Clyde. The manager and the teller laugh, thinking he's joking, so they allow them to withdraw. When they get home, they hear the police siren approaching. Adele suggests leaving, but Frank knows it's too late. He ties Adele and Henry up to get them out of trouble before he surrenders to the police. The mother and son cry as they watch him being arrested. Soon, Adele learns that Frank is charged with kidnapping, so she hurries to meet with a prosecutor, insisting that Frank didn't harm them. However, he warns her that harboring a criminal is a crime, so she could lose custody of her son if she tries to defend him. In the end, Frank is sentenced to 10 years for the escape and 15 years for kidnapping. Adele writes him a letter, but Frank never responds. Within a month, she voluntarily gives up custody of Henry to Gerald. In his junior year, Henry gets a girlfriend for the first time and plays baseball at school. Soon, Gerald apologizes to Henry for how he left them. He says he wasn't good enough to stay during those difficult times, and Henry forgives him. Eventually, Henry decides to move in with his mother for the rest of his senior year. That's when he tries baking peach pie, much to Adele's delight. Years later, an adult Henry now owns a bake shop. He receives a letter from Frank, who read about his shop in a magazine. Frank is about to be released and asks Henry's permission to write to Adele. Henry writes back to Frank to let him know that his mother still lives at the same address. After being released, Frank sees Adele waiting for him, and they embrace. For half of his life, Henry worried about his mother, but he's relieved to know that she won't be spending the rest of her life alone anymore. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.